Hey everybody, it's Jason Blaha here, and it's time for another Breakfast with Blaha. And today I'm having Greek yogurt and almond butter. And uh, yes, they're both organic, and yes, it's fat free Greek yogurt for those who ask. So unhealthy. Let's talk a little bit about training frequency. Um, this is one of those where I said the other day in a video, I needed to dig into it. I went and read all the relevant meta-analysis objectively. And this is a case where, and I hate to have to say this, because every time I do this, what do people do? Jason, you're flip-flopping. Sorry, these meta-analysis came out years after I started YouTube. I can't help that. All right? If we have a certain amount of research and information, we go off that. We go off of that, and then a bunch of new meta-analysis come out, and you cling to the old information just so that people won't call you flip-flopping. Well, that kind of makes you either ignorant or dogmatic, right? And you can't control what we learn as a species. Well, you can if you're a leading researcher, I guess. So, you've got to go with the data. And, you know, here's the thing. Here's the logic that we worked off of. And the, the logic is sound. And I think, I think that what gets highlighted here is just because something makes a lot of sense, that you can draw a very logical explanation for something and way of doing things based upon certain amount of scientific information that's still incomplete, and you can create a very good chain of logic that makes a lot of sense, doesn't mean that it's actually entirely true. And people have a bad habit of doing that. Oh, it makes sense. Okay, so it must be true. Yep, it makes perfect sense. Got it. See the issue there? Well, just because we have a certain amount of science on something and then something makes sense doesn't mean that our conclusion is right. It can be wrong. And here's the thing. Why did I and so many other people say, hey, we need to be training muscle groups, you know, two or three times a week? Why do we say it? Because of muscle protein synthesis uptime. All right, we were looking at saying, all right, we know that it takes a certain amount of time to recover. The higher volumes go, the longer it takes to recover. Now, there's truth to that. Which is why if you do too much training volume in a session, you could, in theory, struggle to grow. You do too little in a session, you also struggle to grow. It's the other problem with high free. This is the problem with the other end of the frequency end. It's a big issue. You know, do the same lift five, six days a week. You better be on gear. So... Especially if they're like, I'm going to do one set, two sets. Yeah, that's not going to work. <laughs> not stimulating enough. But, you know, we would conclude that, hey, you do too much. You, you don't recover in time for your growth window. And muscle protein synthesis only lasts, you know, maybe 48 hours after we train. Blah, blah, blah. Right? So therefore, we need to train everything twice a week. Or some people come up with three times a week based on that. Well, if we want to have it peaked all the time. Well, another issue we had with that, it later started coming out. I noticed a few years ago I quit saying that because there were some studies that came out that said that we were, people were saying we don't have evidence for that. There were PhDs who were saying, actually, the evidence for that's kind of weak. Well, you can't actually prove the muscle stops growing after two days. It doesn't seem to be the case. And you know what? It takes 14 days before a muscle starts losing any size. So in theory, if you trained a muscle every 14 days, it would grow. Especially if it was high quality training, right? Because it's not going to regress. And you stimulate a growth, we could argue you wouldn't grow as fast, right? You're going to be your best growth, but you would still make some gains. And a lot of you guys out there need to make some gains. So, 
we're in that situation, right? Where we're saying that, but the, the evidence more and more is saying not necessarily true. The, the largest part of the growth window is there, but that growth window doesn't necessarily shut down at that point. It, stays, it could stay longer. You're just making the biggest chunk of your growth there. That makes a little more sense. You're not making all of it. You're still growing. So we have that. Then we have these newest meta-analysis. We have several of them now. I didn't know there were more than one, by the way. Again, my mistake. Been more than one. They've all kind of concluded for hypertrophy purposes. Weekly training volume is more important than frequency. In other words, there's not a statistical significant difference between doing 10 or 12 sets once a week for a muscle of quality sets versus spreading them out. Okay. Versus spreading them out. And we're generally finding going much beyond that needs to be really specialized. You have to be very careful when you're exceeding even the 10 to 12 per week because it can be too much. Right? That's where we're finding an issue with volume being a driver of hypertrophy. That's where we're running into a big issue. A lot of people don't grow maximally on 20 sets a week. We know from a single session they don't. We've got clear studies on that showing you they will gain less muscle 20 sets in a week versus 10 or 15. Some muscles grow less off 15 than 10 from a single session. Some do. Others don't. It's a little nuanced, doesn't it? But they're showing that when volumes are equal, so is hypertrophy. So what, what are we saying here, Jason? Jason, are you supporting bro splits? Not traditional bro splits. No, not in the sense that you need to come in and do 20 sets in one workout and throw a bunch of single joint movements in. I'm saying that if you wanted to do a muscle only once a week, you need to approach it intelligently. You still need to be training off big movements for the majority of your training. Your volume needs to be appropriate. Um, here's the other thing I'm going to say. If you're only training a muscle once a week, I'm going to say that your weekly volume needs to be tempered. And here's why. Because doing 20 sets in a single session causes less muscle growth. And if you're only training it once a week, where does that put you? 10 to 15? And that's the only time you're, you may be really hitting that muscle. So in other words, if we're going to go that route, it makes sense to do less weekly training, right? Upper, lower type splits or whatever, splitting things up makes more sense because we want more total weekly volume, right? That's the idea. But if we're going to hit a muscle once a week, it makes sense to temper the volume. This is where a push-pull legs or a squat bench deadlift type day makes sense. It makes sense on three days a week. And a lot of champions have trained that way. And not just powerlifters. I know some monstrously big bodybuilders who you don't need to train three days a week. You go out there and look. Some of the, There's some big name coaches out there who are monstrous themselves. Not pro bodybuilders. not using pro bodybuilder doses. But they're big dudes who train that way. I know some who train like that. They're like 10 or 12 sets once a week. Three day a week training. And it is working for them. Their exercise selection is very, very careful. So my point here is um, I, I don't think we can be taught, tied to this frequency idea dogmatically. But I still think from a practical perspective, we only have a couple of options that really work. We only have a couple options that make sense. All right? And that is either something like a push-pull legs, so only three day a week, or upper lower four day. So all I'm saying is I, I'd say your options are expanded a little bit more. 
Uh, and, and I think the literature and science backs that. And, and I hate to say it because I don't want to come out and say bro split type training is good because it, it, the traditional bro split, I'm still not really in support of like five day, five days a week, five different body parts, six days a week. You don't need to be training that much. But can you get away with once a week and still probably make possibly even maximum muscle growth? The research seems to indicate it. If your training is smart, if your training is smart. All right, guys, but that's really all I have to say on that today. I hope it's been informative, and I will talk to you guys next time.